Hi, it's Chester Tugwell from Blue PK Computer Training. We're in uh, Project 2013 here, and we're going to look at a new feature called Task Path Highlighting. Uh, you can find this option uh, when you're in a Gantt chart. You need to go to your Gantt Chart Tools Format tab, and in the Bar Stars group, you'll find the Task Path option here. Now, what you can see is that if you select a task, it will highlight one of four, one of four of these things. You can highlight predecessors, driving predecessors, we'll look at the difference between the two in a mo, uh, successors and driven successors, we'll also look at the difference between these. Now this option is very simple to use, what you do is you select the task that you want to kind of examine, and then you go up here and you say, right, so what are the predecessors for this task? Now I've got a fairly, well, really simple project here, but this just makes it really simple to see the difference between, say, for example, predecessors and driving predecessors. So here we are. In yellow, I have the tasks that precede the task that I've selected. Pretty easy. I'm going to remove that highlighting. What if I go for driving predecessors? Well, you can see that only one of them actually gets the highlight when I choose this option, driving predecessors. Why is that? Well, because of the lag between the finish date of this task and the start date of the task that I've selected, this isn't actually driving the start date of my selected task, but this is, this task is. Right, so that explains the difference between these two highlighting options. Let's look at the successor option. I'm just going to remove the current highlighting, make it a little bit clearer, and I say, right, what are the successors? Uh, to my task. Well, let's have a look. Now this one isn't because there is no relationship between this task and this task, but all of these tasks here are successors to this task because of the relationships that have been set up. You can see that in purple. Now what happens if I go up here and I say, well, let's remove that highlighting and let's go for driven successors. Nothing, no driven successors for this task. There were successors but no driven successors. So a driven successor is defining the task that's defining the start date of these tasks. And it isn't this task that's doing it. It's in fact this one. This one here is defining when these tasks start. That's because of the extra lag that we have here compared to this task. So let's just see how this works. So I'm just going to make sure I've removed any highlighting. I go to task four and let's see what this shows up if I choose driven successors and there we are we can see that these tasks are driven by this task and not this task so that's the beauty of this little tool it analyzes the situation for you and makes it really clear which are the driven successors and which are just the normal successes okay hopefully that was helpful